you mind if I just had a new haircut? Thanks to Zia. <laughs> I've been cutting his hair for the last whatever years. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> another inside live with us and then now we are still in Australia yep at my dad's place near Byron Bay Byron Bay and then we still gonna be here for the next two weeks before we go to Indonesia for a holistic therapist training that Kimana will be co-teaching with another teacher multiple teachers there'll be five teachers for it in Bali a month-long live-in training Today's topic, we are going to talk about the powerful influence of environment, how our environment that we're in massively affects both our health and our want to do things, what our urges are, our desires, our aspirations are highly influenced by what we surround ourselves with. There's a saying when you're in Rome, when in Rome, act like the Romans because it's much easier in an environment to flow with what naturally is happening in that environment. In Indonesia, we have similar saying. It's said, um, di mana bumi dipijak, di situ langit dijunjung. Basically, <laughs> whatever <laughs> land or earth that you step on is that particular sky laws that is applied. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes sense. When in Rome, <laughs> act like the Romans. <laughs> So okay. there's quite a bit of research around how powerful environment is for our health and our mind. Uh, one of them is related to a business study where it was looking at the five closest people in your life and seeing how much money they made and showing that over a long period of time, each year, you made a similar amount to what the average was between your five closest people. So to recap that another way, if one year you spend lots of time with someone that doesn't make so much money, your money is likely to go down as well. If another year you spend lots of time with people with successful businesses, they're motivated, your money is more likely to go up. And they showed this on quite an amazing scale over a very long period of time, quite an interesting study, showing that who we spend our time with, we become more familiar with, not just in money, but the way we speak, you know, the food choices that we have, the environments we want to live in, all of these can be affected by the people that we choose to spend I have spend a personal time experience and that when I was in uni, I um, used to host many student exchange. So there's these students from uh, India, I mean, the ones that have a very particular accent from India, from England, from um, China, and then each time after they, not long after they stay with me, I start to speak like them with their accent. So I will start having the head movement when I, when I was the Indian student. But basically, yeah, it's like our surrounding really shapes who we are. In this case, even in my own home, my yeah. room, but it still affected me. Yeah, Zia especially. The more vata someone has, the quicker they will be affected by their environment. So this wind vata element is dominant, so easily affected by external influences. That also affecting in the language, like studying in language. When you're studying language, many people, including me, say that when you study a foreign language in the that foreign place where the language comes from, you will learn easier. Like for me, I used to study French. Mm. Um, it's not really working if I just study in, what is that? In, in, Indonesia. in Indonesia. If I start having, even just having someone that I keep practicing with, the French people, it's become up, um, easier. And mm. then when I live in Turkey, because I forced to learn Turkish because the people at that time don't really speak English, then my Turkish, you know, learning become, you know, faster. faster. And then I forgot when I'm not in Turkey, but every time I come back to Turkey, somehow my Turkish I'm just so come back. And we'll see this both ways. If you naturally lived in Turkey when you were born, then you probably speak Turkish. Right? <laughs> the environment influences you too. So language and country. Um, next one is related to health yeah, and environment. So one very extreme one that we all see is the tropics. It's a, it's a very warm environment most of the year round. So certain conditions are more likely to present in the tropics than they are in a colder environment. 
So in the tropics, we're more likely to have pitta type conditions. They're more heat related, digestive problems, diarrhea, barley belly, skin conditions and rashes. All of these are more likely in a tropical environment. Yeah. Then we also have its opposite, like a cold environment where circulation issues are more likely to present, joint issues are more likely to present. So we can see that environment can have a huge influence on both our mind, our money, and also our body's health too. This is one of the things about Ayurveda that I really like is that it can be applied in every area of life. So can you talk more One about of my that? things that I love about Ayurveda is it doesn't matter what area of life you look at, you can always use the lenses of Ayurveda. It's a word that I'll use a lot in my classes, is a lens. And it means that you can look at any subject of life and go, oh, how can I better understand this subject? And the lens that we're going to use to better understand environment medicine is a five element lens. So you'll see this class in other of the online classes, five elements, five different categories to understand all of the world. And what's different between just Western science five categories and an Indian science five categories is that it's the same five categories no matter what the subject is. So I could look at a plate of food and I'll go, oh, what's the five elements in the plate of food? Or I could look at a person and go, what's the five elements in a person? Or I could look at an environment. That's what we're going to look at in this class, an environment. And what's the five elements related to different environments? The benefits of using the same language on multiple subjects is it shows connections between life. Mm -hmm. So now we can start to go, oh, I have a dominance of fire and air. Which environments might I need to increase or decrease? So we'll start to unpack that now. We're gonna go through each of these five environments and show you how they relate to a certain element. One second. If you're new to the concept of the five elements, you can go to our YouTube channel. There is a specific class on understanding the five elements. Great. So we're gonna start with ether element. So the ether element is the most subtle of all the elements. So the environments that have more quantity of ether to them are high altitudes and mountainous peaks. So this is where the space opens up more. There's more space between all the air molecules. The higher we get in altitude, we're able to see far into the distance where we can see and view a long area is more ether, more opening and expansive. And temples are often built on these high peaks. The ether elements associated with spirituality, temples, those things, and places where there is deep silence. When I'm snowboarding up in the high mountains, it's the quietest places that I've ever been to on the planet. So this silence is associated with the ether element. That's the environment of ether. Yeah. Yet spending time in that environment will give us certain benefits. So the benefits associated with an ether environment is that it increases what Ayurveda refers to as sattva. Uh, this is like the harmony in the mind, the ability to be present in the moment, not attached to past crap and things that we've already experienced, not desiring for future things that we want to get, but here in the now, that's sattva. So when we're on a higher mountain and we can see into a greater distance, we're more likely to be present in the now less attached to other things. So it creates more sattva, it gives us right knowledge because we're able to perceive the moment as it is. Uh, it is uplifting for our body and our mind and it centers ourselves, grounds us in. Yeah. The last one for that environment is its contraindications, the things that it could imbalance if it's like too much. Everything has both good and bad. It's never like, oh, this category is better than that category. All five elements are necessary. So too much of the ether environment is not good when the mindset is spacey and you're ungrounded and you're oh, thinking about the stars all the time. Then no, you need to spend a little bit less time in the mountains. Uh, ungroundedness, extreme fatigue, when the body is exhausted, then that's also not the time for a pilgrimage to the mountaintop. So in this case, what do I want to say? I forgot to say the mountain. <laughs> oh, not the time for the mountain for you. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, just like you said, everything is have two sides, both good and bad. And then I was just wondering, because ether related also with spirit element, yeah. So what about uh, spirit, you know, spirit place, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like a place that you, somehow when you answer it's just that, 
kind of you get some bad vibes on it. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking so about that... like bad juju vibes. Yeah. Like positive <laughs> juju. juju. <laughs> like, yeah. So is that still categorized as a ether environment? It's a place where the ether has been affected. The energy in the environment has been affected, but I wouldn't say that it's a high ether okay. environment because okay. it's it's got walls that are containing that energy yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. So that's more like a home or a building. That's okay. a bit more earth element. Not necessarily ether environment that you tried to mention earlier no not, okay. not related to the ether okay. environment i'm talking about here i was just wondering okay yeah cool in the sense that inside that space there is an open space that part is ether but it's not a dominant ether environment it doesn't make us expansive and wow look at the bigger picture of the world that would be an okay. ether environment. and then so when you say about um, being in a mountain top is not ideal for this, this, this type of person, let's yeah. say, which is a dominant vata. Also, would you also mention, would you also say that everyone has different goal, everyone has different purpose. So if that's your purpose to just be connected all the time and not really care about, oh, I'm actually fatigued, I'm actually feeling tired, I'm actually accessing vata, then, but if you still want to, you know, that's the goal, then just go for it then that's fine that's your goal you can do whatever you want with your own life force if it's about longevity and preserving this life in form then we'd ideally want some of all of these five environments over our year lifespan to keep the balance regulated and longevity cool so that's the first element in environment the next one is related with the air element the air the wind element and this is most related to group gatherings where we have lots of people together so whenever we get lots of people together, human beings are very high in the wind, the air element. We move fast. We have lots of ideas. These are all associated with wind and the air element. So cities where group gatherings of people come together are very wind, very air, lots of movement, lots of communication, uh, lots of electrical activity, and also environments where there is actual wind. These are the environments of air element. Next one we'll look at is the benefits. What's good about being in these environments, group gatherings and cities? It's creativity and ideas. If I wanted to get an idea rolling forward and talk to people and communicate, then I'd go to a group gathering. To I'd network. go to a city to network, exactly. This air element is about that networking, exchanging of ideas, communicating, creating new directions. So it gives freshness to the mind. It gives us the ability to share with others it is associated with group work yeah. have, uh, notes over here <laughs> yeah. uh, then and the it. challenges of the air environment the contraindications is nervous system disorders so if someone's got a nervous system disorder they don't need to challenge themselves more by spending more time in the city insomnia um, would you say that as a nervous yeah. system Insomnia, yeah, inability to sleep well. It's something that Zia just went through. We went and stayed on my mum's property up near Noosa and we slept on the ground. And she slept in amazingly tent. in the tent on the ground compared to when we've been in the cities and the high electrical activity not sleeping yeah. as well. I also need to mention not only in a tent on the ground but also on top of my sheepy skin. On so, top so. of my soft <laughs> sheepy skin. <laughs> So that's the air one, that's it. Yeah. You know, and then we look at the fire oh, yeah. environment. So again, we have group gatherings, yet before it was group gatherings with communication as the focus. For fire, it's group gatherings with competition as the focus. Like it's not just about, oh yeah, I want to communicate and share something with you. It's like, oh, let's see if we can go a little bit further. It's not necessarily competition in a mean way, but it's like, let's do it even more. Let's take it even more. So there is a specific goal Goals, that you want yes. to reach. Uh -huh. So again, this happens in cities a lot. Pushing harder, going further, communication with competition. Um, and it is also related to fires, sunlight, the tropics, bright color environments, steam and sauna. These are the places where fire is more. Okay. Summer in Mediterranean. Summer Mediterranean, yeah, that would be a bit more of a fire type environment. Which we'll talk later at the end on how that affects my acne on my face. Yeah. So the benefits of those environments is circulation. It keeps things circulating through the body very well. It creates pressured growth. 
It's like, oh, we need to do this now. You're working on it, I'm working on it, we're pushing, we're going towards that same thing. So cities create a lot of that pressured growth. We need to do this now, everyone's pushing in that direction. Peer pressure. Peer pressure, <laughs> exactly. The agni, the metabolic fire of the body goes up and the armor, the half digested byproducts, the, the waste products that are stuck throughout the tissues because we couldn't metabolize them enough is called armor. This tends to go down. So heating things build up the agni and they get rid of the armor, the half digested byproducts. So that's the benefit. Yep, and then the challenges, the contraindications is burning sensation. So any burning sensations throughout the body, red skin conditions and pitta type diseases, ulcers, acid reflux. Yeah. Anger. Anger. Yeah. Stress is... Stress could come under any Frustration. Version. Frustration, yeah. All of these. Why are you so slow? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a few pitta people complain in the city before, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this project it's so slow? It's not moving anywhere. Anyway, so that's the <laughs> so fire. So we've got three environments so far. We've got ether, high mountains, temples, air, electrical activity, group gatherings, communication, fire, group gatherings with competition, going for goals. And now we have water. This is more... Easy, ocean. Uh, uh, <laughs> not oceans. really. Is yeah, it, it is. Best? Yeah, rivers, <laughs> oceans, waterfalls, forests. Plants, time with plants is very water type environment. Time with loved ones as well, where it's more personal in the connection. And the moonlight is also associated with the water moonlight. element. Yeah, a little bit of time in the, in the moonlight. That's right, it's actually one of the prescriptions written down. I'm pretty sure it's the Chirak Samhita, it's one of the oldest texts on Ayurveda. And one of the prescriptions is to walk within the moonlight with your lover. Walk in a flower garden in the moonlight with your lover. Yeah. That's a balancing Love. prescription for pitta, excess heat and fire. Can't be more watery than that. Can't be more watery than that. <laughs> and make so. love in the bushes. No. <laughs> Sorry. So, so, now, the benefits of a water type environment is it's calming, it's cooling, it's nourishing, it's moisturizing to the body, and it's mentally stabilizing. So great to get in the ocean. I know so many people, if they're like, oh, my head's just going, oh, stress, jump in the ocean, and it's just like cleansing for the mind. It pulls away all that mental garbage moisturizes the body for me like every time i spend too much time in front of gadget computer laptop this kind of thing you know when you when your head just like ah uh, and then i just go to the ocean or waterfall or creek and then somehow by just swimming there mm. that thing was gone just yeah. disappear it's amazing yeah it's great to pull excess electrical activity and vata from the brain and the face just splashing water on the face is even great Oh, that's then a benefit. The conditions, contraindications yeah. for a water type environment is sometimes kapha conditions where there's excess weight and phlegm and mucus. Uh, we Just with a little baby, we wouldn't say, oh, it's time to go in the ocean if they're cold and mucusy and damp and wet. It's so too with an hour. Or in German, how do you say it? Schleim. 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 When you get too much schleim, it's the mucus building up. Is yeah. he often I don't know if it's my favorite word. Because <laughs> <No, no. laughs> no. he went out this in Germany, no. and so he re he needs to remember different words, local words to explain to people, and then every time he went out. It's the only words I end up knowing in a language is <laughs> medical words and food words. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry, distracted. Yeah. <laughs> and our last environment, the earth environment to, to live in, is. is Caves and stone houses, so solid buildings. The more solid they are, the more earth they are. So to some degree, all buildings are a bit earth, but if they're built out of stone or carved into a mountain, very earth environment. And the benefits of this is it's comforting, it's grounding, it's nurturing, and it's supporting. It really builds in this structure and support to our mind, a feeling like, yeah, it's okay. I've got my defenses here. I'm secure in the place that I live. Question. Yeah. You say cave is part of earth. Yeah. Uh, yet why many people who do like spiritual stuff, like meditation, many of them are doing in the cave. I thought. Because if you like want to go to the highest place, 
then you need to make sure you've got the deepest root into the ground. If you want to build that tree right up there to touch the sky and deep parts of spirit, then we need to have strong grounding pieces downwards. So someone can meditate in a cave because they're not affected by the air and the wind and the other elements that are out there. They're grounded down so much they have a space and they sit and they meditate and they take themselves towards ether from that environment. Okay. So the best would normally be a cave in the high, in the high mountains. mountains for a spiritual practice. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. So that's the Contra earth. Indications the of the earth is a sedentary lifestyle. So someone that's just not motivated, not moving much. Uh, and uh, stubbornness, depression, and kapha diseases, mucus, damp, blockage, congestion for the earth environment of the cave. So we're now going to put it into practice an example of my personal health challenge, which is the acne. Um, that, so here's a little background. I never had acne ever in my life before. Even in puberty, when everyone got you know their puberty in high school, their pimple, and just never had it. No matter food that I eat, I eat whatever dairy, milk, dairy is milk, <laughs> and then chili and then fried foods. You know, I put makeup because they said like makeup is the cause of acne. I just put whatever makeup I slept with it, and never had acne, never until I live in Turkey for two months. Uh, that was in two thousand and ten. It was in peak summer. And it was like freaking hot. Like there are many days it reached 45 degrees. It was just super hot. And because of the environment that I live in, then also in the fact, the kind of food that I eat. And then it's also a fact, you know, um, other type of thing that is, on, that is unique to that place that I'm never exposed to. So then after that moment, then I always had acne. Like it's keep coming back. It's on and off, on and off. And then on the photo that I shared earlier on Instagram and on Facebook about my progression of my acne, the two last photos where it shows how my face got clearer is after I leave in the States, um, not leave, after I, was I stayed in the States in winter, last winter in January, um, my face somehow cleared up. And then after uh, this September, the last photo that I took is completely you know, much clearer. And that's after I live in, uh, I was, we were in Europe for three months, but this time, even though it's summer, that winter, uh, that summer somehow was pretty cool. It was actually chilly. Like we need to- Winter for Zia. Yeah. My winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different, yeah, different kind of summer, uh, not winter, summer. Different kind of summer that I exposed to in 2010 that it reached 45 degrees. That summer, a few months ago was, you know, it's winter for you. It's always yeah. relative to wherever that person is moving from. So if you're moving from a cooler to a hotter environment, that's moving towards summer for you, you know, yeah. if you travel somewhere. So can you explain more on the science behind of this if we try to assess um, my imbalance of acne um, from this environment Lenses. Yeah. So the first one is that it's an air environment because of change. Going to a city, lots of people studying and learning. So the ability for movement, the air element, to move things through her body intelligently decreased. When that happens, it often starts to influence metabolism. Digestion doesn't work as well. Then it's a hot environment. So now we've got lots of heat to add to that. Things aren't moving so well through the body and heat has come on with the environment. There was probably also a lot of chilies and fried foods and other heating foods. We're not just talking about the environment here. Yeah. We can use the same lens, five elements, and go, oh, there was fire excess food. Ah, oh, oh, there was not so much good exercise. We could use the lens in many areas. At that time, I still have a habit of bringing chili, sambal, sauce everywhere mm -hmm. I go. So, yeah. so we've got lots of fire element excess in food. It's a hot environment that she hasn't been exposed to before. It's new and changeable. So air and fire, dominant elements in the environment. And then they start to over flood the body and express inside the body. Fire. Heat naturally rises and spreads outwards from its place, so it does that across the face. So it, where it was on the face is telling us insight to where it needs to move through the body. 
different class. <laughs> now, in this class, we're looking at how the environment affected that. So she then left that environment and her skin got somewhat better, yet it had stuck inside the tissues. It had changed the function of what's going on. So then the next time, oh, the environment got a little bit hotter or she excessed in deep fry or chili, it would present again. When we went to Colorado, very cold environment. We were right up in the mountains. We're snowboarding, so we're doing good exercise. We can see expansive areas, good food, and she balanced herself a lot and the skin completely cleared up at the end of that. So yeah, that's the um, one of the things that, from my personal healing progress that has affected my acne, mm -hmm. which is just one part. In the future, this is one of the frequently asked questions, how to heal acne naturally. There's the environment, medicine is just one part of it, but a big chunk Big part. topic, yeah. We're going to wrap it up with having a look at how you could adapt this to a city environment. So to go, oh, I need more of one element, I'm gonna just move to the mountains is sometimes not so realistic. Sometimes you need to live in certain environments. You, you need to live where you are or your family is or where your work is. More than 50% so, of people, based on surfing demographic nowadays, more than 50% 50% population on Earth lives in the city. In the city. So people are sometimes forced or strongly encouraged to move into air, electrical environments and fire um, group competition environments. So these elements will naturally increase. So one way is to organize pilgrimage, to organize over your year time where you spend in beautiful environments associated with the elements that you need. And really everyone needs all five of them. So look at your year and go, oh, do I have a little high mountain moment? And that could be as small as once a week I climb to my local hill here, or in the afternoon I watch the sunset from a view. Do I have some time within the city? Most people in the city got enough of that. You know, do I have some time with competition? Most people in the city have enough of that. Do I have some time with plants, nature, go to a natural waterfall, an ocean, whatever? Do I have time where it's dependable and secure, solid stone buildings, time meditating in houses? Or you can also start to bring the elements into your home. So another way to adapt it and use it is to if build you can't it travel. It. If you can't travel Especially. and go somewhere else, is to bring the elements to you. So for the ether element, we bring in crystals and positive energy type things. So Tesla plates, crystals, things that release a good energy environment. For people who are that. wondering what is Tesla plate, this is... Vibrational energy plates that <laughs> um, harness the Schumann resonance. It's the Earth's vibrational resonance that it vibrates close towards the stratosphere, close towards the edge of the Earth's atmosphere. And it's and a special vibrational element that helps our ether body keep it yeah. very simple. It helps our energetic body to be stronger. Um, crystals for the ether inside the home. The next one for air is an ionizer. Uh, this is an electrical device that changes the quality of the air, reduces pollution in your home. Some of the best ionizers should produce oxygen with them as well. Uh, ionically available oxygen, something like the Elandra device does that. Um, for fire, to bring into the home, candles, lights, good quality lights, well lit, nice warm red colors. For water element, plants, good juicy looking succulent plants and greenery within the home, oh, also okay. water features. A water filter can be very powerful to bring in good quality water into the body. And we're not just talking about a filter that takes out, but one that energizes and is really good for the body. And the earth one is wood and stone carvings to have features that are solid stone carvings throughout your house or dwelling brings in more of that earth element. Yeah. Every time Kimana saw like a wooden house or wooden and stone together, he was just like, Oh. <laughs> I love wood Just and stone. By looking at Building it. from wood and stone feels so grounding to me to be in that environment. I love it. Um, for all of those uh, things that we recommend, of like um, the water filter, the ionizer, later we will post the um, the link to our Kimana's recommended products. Um, so now we, as there is no question, we will 
close it to today. So basically, this five element system of environment is a system that you your modern interpretation, your personal interpretation. That's right. We Ayurveda has these five elements, and the lens can be applied to many subjects of life. Using it as it is here, five elements for environment, is something that I haven't seen in another text or I haven't gathered from other people. It's me using the traditional qualities of the five elements and focusing on the lens of environment and then bringing in my own qualities, characteristics, environment, benefits, contraindications to that. So it's my educated use of the five element lens on environment. We do this a lot in one of the schools that I co-create called Thai Vedic Yoga. And we teach people how to use Ayurvedic lenses, both three doshas, five elements, five values, and 12 meridians, lots of different lenses that we can use to focus on subjects of life and teach us the connections. So we've got a one month training coming up in a couple of weeks in Bali, and then there's many events around the world from there where we teach you these lenses, how to understand the environment that works best for someone, what time of day, uh, the season, the individual, all related to these lenses are part of the Thai Vedic curriculum. This is also why uh, in one of our events, which is the Ayurvedic Detox Retreat, the one week retreat, uh, we will choose an element, uh, sorry, which is an environment with a dominant element that will support that. Yeah, the Ayurvedic Vitality Now retreats, the Ayurvedic cleansing to help the digestion. We're focusing on a good environment that really helps the body. Just as we would for most of our events, we search through and see how can we make this elemental environment really suit and promote the purpose of the event. Which is why uh, for our 2019, it's still far away and almost book gap. Um, we choose a place uh, that has waterfall, secret waterfall in the mountain. 14 meter high waterfall on the property. It's up in the mountain. It's looking out over rice paddies to the horizon and the ocean in the distance. It's a really ideal environment. Cool. Thank you so much for watching, for joining us in this another live session. Next week, we will be back uh, with a topic that is related with um, water. There's an art, a whole art of how to drink water that many of them is actually not taught since we were little. The art of drinking water. Stay tuned. More than meets the eye. <laughs> cool. Um, for more information, for more resources, you can go to our YouTube channel, um, youtube.com slash balance life without the ED. You can also go to our website, balancelife.id. There are so much more resources from articles, blog, and then there's free resources that you can download from ebook, how to choose the best water, and then other uh, tables and um, what is that? Tables, charts of Ayurveda that Kimana made is all there. And then if you subscribe to our newsletter, you will also straight away get a download of Kimana's Ayurvedic Dosha quiz, and then you'll get updated for our future events. Great to share with you all. Until next time, see you next week. Bye. Bye.